G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, I'm pushing on with uh, the little shear line metal lathe, getting it uh, up to scratch. And this is part two of the video series that I'm doing on this. And this is an Australian made, very early model shear line before that was sold, the rights were uh, sold across to America where they're now made. As you can see, I've taken off the rotating, the swiveling um, headstock and you can see the key here uh, which I initially thought was a wedge but it's it's a key and I've measured this and I've measured the, the slot to see what the uh, the specs are and it's what I what I thought would be the case uh, which way does that go it goes that way you can see where someone's been beating on the end of this and sort of flared it out a bit uh, so, anyway, it sits in there, and the slot measures at, measures across at uh, 4.69 mil, but the key measures at 4.23 mil, so it's an 18 thou difference, uh, and uh, basically that allows the key to be moved. You know, the further back you come, the more movement you can get, and the further in it goes, the less adjustment you have. That's the way that works. Alright, well we'll go and have a look at the headstock. I need uh, a, a spanner that will fit, well I need two spanners, one to undo the lock nut and one to adjust the, the preload when I reassemble it. And I've only got this one big spanner, uh, which is basically, what is it, 26 mil. So, I have to find another spanner which will fit in, a very narrow open-ended spanner which will fit in the, the back here so I can hold the the preload uh, nut will undo the, the lock nut. Now once again, <laughs> you know, how many people have a thin spanner like that? Well, I went through all my tools, you know, I've got a metric, full metric set and a full imperial set, nothing doing. So then I turned to my uh, box of tools, you know, everybody has that box of tools that is all the stuff that's really old and odd and pretty useless and uh, never gets used and you think about selling them but then you keep them because just one, you know, one day they just might do the job, there might be something in that box. So I had a look in the box and I'll show you mine. Right, well here it is and wouldn't you know it, in the box I find a spanner which is the perfect thickness a little bit uh, small but uh, basically exactly what I was after and I just basically opened up the jaws slightly on it you know the, uh, the thing was just that two or three three mil undersize open up the jaws clean up the faces and we're good to go all right to do this we'll put our a spanner in. Just trying to do this, show you on the video. Yeah, big spanner on. <sighs> Bang, away she goes. As easy as that. So once you've got the, the right tools, well then you can do these jobs. You know, you don't want to go doing a half bodgy job and damaging your nuts and bolts and things. So now it just comes apart. Keep them in the same in the same sequence. You can see that's got marking on the one side. Okay, now we've got to get this preload nut off. To do that, we've got to stop the spindle turning. So we'll put a drill in the uh, chuck end of the uh, spindle. Get a big spanner on it. Ah, it's come, it's come easy. I thought it was going to be a bit tight. So that'll let that come off. Okay, once again, keep them in the same order. I've got the bits of my Vegemite lid once again. Now, what's the setup? How's that come out? Alright, we'll 
try knocking it out. Try knocking the spindle out with a rubber mallet. Bingo. Just as I suspected, they come apart, which is brilliant. So I can actually grease this. Um, yeah, that's great. I can grease these without taking the races out. Coming in close on this, we can see there's not much grease. So, what do we got? Very little. Very little grease in what's there. It's as hard and dry as a nun's, you know what. So, uh, yeah. Not good. Hmm, alright. Well, now it's a matter of. Uh, Take out the other one, and it just lifts out, which again, see this is good, magneto bearings, generally you can do this on magneto bearings, they normally disassemble, you know, so this is great, it saves a lot of mucking around, hopefully a good clean up and a grease and this will be as good as new. Once again, don't mix up your bearings, make sure you keep them uh, in the right ends, but yeah, this is, this is just like you'd have on a, uh, a, a regular electrical magneto or a torque post grinder use the exact same setup for their spindles. Right, so we're washing the parts off in petrol or benzene as they like to call it in Europe. I like that word, benzene. Very German. My family background actually half German and half British. So having a German surname uh, goes with playing with benzene. All right, a bit of trivia. So it's all washed. Um, use the old petrol. Now the thing is, you have to blow off the uh, the bearings, but you don't go crazy on this. I mean, you blow them off with air, but you make sure they don't spin very fast. You know, none of this sort of spin it up to full bore until they're screaming situation. You just, whoops, better get the petrol out of the way. You just put your air on and just make sure they don't go spinning hard. Just blow them out. That's all it needs. Now I've done the other one. Now I'll check out the, uh, the races and see what they look like. Well, these racers look mint. I just had a look at them, and they're they're great. So we can reuse these; they're perfectly serviceable. So now it's just a matter of lube it up, put it back together, and yeah, it'd be a simple job. Right. Well, I've re-greased the uh, the bearings and the racers. I've used LM lithium-based grease, multi-purpose, quite alright for this job. In fact, that's what they used originally. You can tell by the colour. If it was molly grease, it would be uh, a dark black grey colour. But this is just the uh, lithium stuff. It's quite right. You, you can use this for anything. And I use that for my other bearings on my other lathes. No problem. So you grease up the, um, the bearings and the races. Slide the spindle back in through from the from the uh, chuck end, should be around that way I suppose, and uh, then you put in the uh, the ball centre at this end, make sure you put it in the right way because one side will be slightly thicker than the other, the thickest edge faces out, but, you know when you disassemble it make sure you, you note all this stuff because they are generally slightly thicker on one side, on the side that you're preloading against, okay? So then, don't punch on the centres, just use the nut. There's enough thread there that you can just use the nut. You hold the spindle with a drill, nice hard piece of steel, and you just use your spanner and do up the nut uh, until it you know, comes up firm. Now, you get to a point where if it's adjusted correctly, there shouldn't be any notches. You should be able to 
turn that and it should feel pretty smooth. I mean, you'll always get a little bit of a rumble with ball races, but you do it up basically so there's just, you know, barely any sort of notchiness there at all, almost nothing. If it's, if it's too notchy, you, uh, you put in your, uh, your drill bit, back the nut off slightly, and then give it a whack with a rubber mallet so that you bring the ball centre back out. Otherwise, backing it off won't do anything. You've got to give it a tap just to loosen it. Then check it again. Now, if it's you know, a bit too loose, well, then you do the same, tighten up a bit, and uh, yeah, get it so it just turns nice and smooth, no obvious uh, notching or pinching, and you're pretty much good to go. Now, that's how I would normally do a, a ball race or a bearing, um, a ball a ball bearing, not a not a tapered bearing, but a ball bearing. Now, uh, Sherline say to adjust the spindle up so there's point, so there's two thou in play. Well, to check that you have to put the headstock back onto the uh, the lathe, and then we can we can check that. I will we'll check that and just see, but. I personally think this is quite 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 okay, just do it this way and uh, you know, you shouldn't have any problem at all. You want to get the least amount of uh, end play in it as possible and I mean once you run it, if it feels warm, well you can easily just take off the pulley and just back it off a fraction. So anyway, for now I'll lock it up at that position and uh, We'll uh, put it back on the lathe and see how it, how it all feels. Right, well I reckon that's spot on. That feels really good, really smooth. Not No discernible end play, but there could be a bit there. There's also no no side to side, all right? You shouldn't feel any, any lateral movement. So now we'll put it on the headstock and I'll put a test indicator on it and we'll see if we can get a reading. Let's check it. Spot on. That's uh, 0 0.05 mil. So that's your two thou in play. So that's it. Perfecto. So what's radial run out like? It was 0 0.05 last time, remember? Which is uh, pretty good for this and we're just slightly better Point zero four yes just Zero four five, so it's just marginally better. A lot, of, not a lot in it really. Mm, no. Yeah, point zero zero five. So yeah, better, but certainly not worse. Having gone to all this trouble, it's worth noting that there's no guarantee that this is actually going to improve things noise-wise. The uh, the fact is that some magneto bearings are just plain noisy, even brand new, you know. Uh, I've had them howling, they just, it's just the way they are. So, what's it like? Hmm, it is better, I think. Yeah, pretty, yeah, it doesn't sound as gritty as it did before, so, you know, I think it might be an improvement. So now we just have to put the pulley back on, put back the motor, fire it up and see what happens. Okay, and then we'll do some alignment. So, this video has gone long enough, so yeah, we'll have to wait till next time to see what the final outcome is. Okay, that's it from me. See you around. Cheers.